Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be discussing brake caliper location, why manufacturers put brake calipers in the places that they do. So we're going to be looking at uh, some different cars out there and also some data that I took while I was visiting the Detroit Auto Show, uh, checking out various vehicles and see if we can come to a conclusion if there is an ideal spot depending on the purpose of the car. So first let's look, just look at some of the different reasons why you may place the brake calipers in a different location. And what I've drawn here is kind of a, an outline of a vehicle with the rear tire and the front tire. And then basically you've got, you know, an upper location, a lower location, back and front, uh, kind of towards the inside of the vehicle of where you may place the brake caliper. I've divided up into these four sections. So uh, from a weight distribution perspective, you may want to put the brake calipers toward the center to keep the moment of inertia of the vehicle lower uh, in order for it to be a little bit more agile. You also may want to place it down low to keep the center of gravity of the vehicle down low. Uh, so weight distribution could play a role in that. Aerodynamics can also play a role. You've got air passing over these wheels, and if there's a certain path that the air likes to take where it could be cooling the brakes, then you don't want to put that brake caliper in that location. You want the air to be able to flow and cool down those brakes. Also, if you have uh, ducts for the air to feed the front brakes or the rear brakes, you may want to have that duct positioned so that it blows air onto the brake itself, not onto the caliper. So that could play a role in where you place the caliper depending on how you have that air duct routed. Uh, and you may want to have a shorter routing so that you blow it up towards the front rather than a longer routing, which is more complicated, costs a bit more, you know, adds more complexity to it uh, to route the air towards the back. Another factor could be suspension packaging. So you've got control arms, knuckles, brake line routing. Uh, for example, if you had an upper control arm that was placed right here and you would have an interference if you had your brake caliper placed there, well then obviously you can't pr place the brake caliper there and you'll have to place it in another location. Uh, the vehicle purpose can play a role. So for example, if you have this off-roading 4x4 vehicle uh, that you know is going to be going through deep mud or water, things like that, well then you may place the calipers a bit higher to try and keep them out of the mud uh, or the debris or whatever it may be down there so they don't get quite as dirty or get messed up. Uh, cost will always play a role in everything, so if there is a location that is for some reason cheaper to do, whether that be packaging or if there's less interferences or things like that, uh, then you know that's definitely going to be preferred uh, from the marketing side where you want to keep the cost of the vehicle as low as possible. And then also appearance always plays a role, so if there's a location that uh, the designer thinks looks best, then that may play a role in where the caliper ends up. So now let's look at some actual vehicles and look at some hard data. So while I was at the Detroit Auto Show, I was checking out different cars and seeing where they placed these uh, brake calipers. And I looked at 55 different cars across 21 different manufacturers and took some data on where they place these calipers. So what we've got going on here is uh, the different locations. This will be the rear tire on the right side and this will be the front tire on the right side. And then you've got this upper quadrant, uh, inner quadrant, lower quadrant, and towards the rear of the vehicle. So on a percentage basis uh, is what I'm looking at where they placed the brake calipers. So of these 55 cars, uh, and if it wasn't apparent, this green car here represents all cars. It's a van and it's green. Uh, so where they placed the majority of them, we've got 53% were towards the rear on the rear wheel, 47% on the inner of the rear wheel, zero up top, zero on the bottom. So I think the suspension packaging is playing the role here uh, where you've got your control arms interfering and you're not going to be placing the brake calipers up high or down low. So 53% towards the rear, 47% uh, towards the front for the rear tire. For the front tire, 49% towards the rear and 51% towards the front. So you know this is kind of a 50-50. Uh, we know they're not up top. We know they're not on the bottom, uh, but they're distributed between the front and the rear fairly evenly as far as being on the inside or the outside, a slight preference towards the outside. So, you know, I wasn't quite satisfied there, so I took a look at some different sports cars. So of these 55 cars, about half of them were sports cars, you know, things like Porsche, uh, Corvettes, Vipers, things like that, where they're obviously being geared towards, a, you know, a track friendly car uh, that's performance oriented. And so of those cars, I took the same data and, you know, as we can tell, there's going to be zero up top and down low from the previous data. But what's interesting is there was definitely a bias for these performance oriented cars. So for the rear, 
of the brake calipers were placed towards the rear, 65%. So, you know, definitely a bias towards the front, towards the inside of the car uh, for the rear brakes. And then for the front brakes, an even heavier bias to be towards the inside. So 83% uh, were towards the inside and 17 were up front. So what this is telling me is what they're probably going for with these performance oriented cars is to have the weight centrally located and then I would imagine up front that they've got uh, air cooling ducts for the front brake uh, that they've probably got routing towards this and that's why you know they want to keep it the weight towards the back and then also have plenty of cooling for the brakes. Uh, an interesting thing, the Dodge Charger, when I looked at the base model, uh, it had the brake calipers up front. However, when you look at the Hellcat, then it places the front calipers in the rear, more centrally located. So it was interesting to see that change to go from, you know, an everyday kind of V8 car to a performance oriented V8 car, you know, same car, but more performance oriented model. Uh, and then also looking at some of the GT3 cars, for example, the Lexus RCF GT3 and the Corvette C7 GT3, uh, both of these having the brake calipers towards the inside of the vehicle and then kind of down low as well. So they kind of put the weight towards the center and then tried to lower it a bit, you know, kind of keep the weight low and in the center, uh, which is ideal from a weight distribution point of view. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.